Uh, like I stated once before, I worked at uh, Buford Memorial Hospital, and uh, Sam was the ER doctor. Him and I was outside talking one night when uh, the ER got a phone call. Apparently these 12 men were in a van and they were all locals. They were all elderly. And it was a foggy night. And they were on uh, Highway 21, head on collision with a semi truck. All nine of them, well, nine were killed. Three died on the way to the hospital. And one died 24 hours later, but all 12 passed away. Well, anyways, getting back to the phone call, Sam looked at me and he goes, we're gonna have a lot of people here. What can we do? And I popped up and I said, well, <laughs> I can open up the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> and put out a pot of coffee. As I know it's going to be a while. The accident happened about 1 o'clock. Uh, I went downstairs, opened up the cafeteria. Uh, the girls that work in the cafeteria prepared a coffee. So all you got to do is hit a switch and 20 minutes later there was like 50 cups of coffee. And I started both coffee pots because I figured it was going to be a whole lot of people there. Well, I uh, got a couple people that I knew that uh, worked in uh, housekeeping and uh, put them in reflective jackets and told them that when these people started coming in just point them down to the waterfront. I'll have the cafeteria open. So that's what they did. We ended up with about 25 cars behind the place. The cafeteria was filled with crying mothers, family members, wives, girlfriends, the whole everything. There must have been about 150 people there eventually around 4 o'clock in the morning and I ended up having to start the dishwasher because of all the cups and saucers I brought out donuts you know, <laughs> everything was free too <laughs> I didn't I didn't charge anything it was just hey compliments to the hospital <laughs> uh, things were still Starting to quiet down. About 4:30, the uh, uh, cafeteria girls start filtering in about quarter to five, five o'clock. And the uh, first one there is the boss, and I told her what happened. She was happy I did it, but uh, a little bit mad at me. For uh, giving away the coffee, giving away the donuts, and I even put a couple cakes out there that was in the refrigerator. Whole cakes. I mean, <laughs> they didn't even cut them yet. <laughs> and I put out some meat scraps and bread, and some jello. It was like a smorgasbord type thing. Well, I ended up next night when I went in, because I was working the midnight to eight shift, there was a note for me that I had to see the CEO in the morning. Okay, no problem. So I was talking, uh, believe it or not, a nurse by the name of Dorothy Taylor. She was the head nurse. 
and uh, I see Dorothy about four o'clock and uh, I told her that you know CEO wanted to see me and I got an idea for a butt chewing you know Mrs. Taylor looked at me and she goes Gene don't bother to show up let me take care of it hey I can't disobey the CEO <laughs> you know I, I have to <laughs> okay okay if you insist then just come in late you know <laughs> okay fine I'll be late <laughs> you know I'll be late well, I got off at 8 o'clock I went downstairs and you now Mr. Stanley and I have already talked Mr. Stanley agreed with me. My actions were pure, 100% accept acceptable to him. And Mr. Stanley put himself in those people's shoes. Talking to Mr. Stanley, he went to school with about nine of those gentlemen that lost their lives. They were all friends of his. And his wife also knew all 12 of them. And he informed me that he's got a whole bunch of funerals to go to over the next few days. And uh, I even got a uh, visit from Mrs. Stanley. She came into the hospital during the day. And Mr. Stanley called me down to the office and Mrs. Stanley and I talked and she said that a lot of the women really took to heart what I did. But that first, no, that was a couple of days afterwards that happened. But the morning after, I was late going in to see the CEO. The CEO's name was Charlie, I can't remember his last name, but his first name was Charles. He was very negative against me for doing what I did. He said I should not have opened up the hospital, I should not have opened up the cafeteria, and I definitely shouldn't have put any food out because the hospital lost money. And I told him, when you're grieving, a little bit of hospitality goes a long way and I just put myself in the shoes of those family members as they came to the hospital crying about their lost husbands that they've been married 40 years mom and dads you know that lost their sons children who lost their dad don't you think a cup of coffee and a donut or a sandwich would make the hospital look like a cared Chuck? Uh, Chuck told me to leave. And as I was leaving, Mrs. Taylor was there with um, the assistant CEO, Sandy. I got called into Sandy's office. Sandy told me not to worry about the butt chewing. That Chuck was money hungry and he doesn't look at human beings as human beings. He looks at human beings as money. But Sandy said what I did was very thoughtful and above board. And she's going to call the uh, company and see if they can do something to help me. Well, I received a hundred dollars in a paycheck from the hospital. I received nothing from the security company, <laughs> security people over on Hilton Head. I didn't even get an attaboy. <laughs> I just got a hey, fuck you. <laughs> but anyways, that's what happened that one night. And like I said, it must have been about 150 people that came in. It was fresh coffee, 
sandwiches, jello, cake, brand new cake. <laughs> and the mess wasn't that bad. Uh, I put out garbage cans with bags, housekeeping, the guys that uh, directed traffic after things kind of settled down. They came into the cafeteria and they cleaned up without being told to. I mean, they just did it automatically. And it was uh, that one black guy that I told you about in the previous video that knew Rainbow, my daughter. And, uh, oh, we talked about her all the time. You know, and like I told him, you know, someday she's going to write me a letter because I'm tired of writing to her. I don't even know if she gets the letters I write. But anyways, uh, that's what happened that one night. And uh, I didn't go to any of the funerals. I didn't know any of the men. But uh, a couple, couple of days later, Sam and I was, again, just outside talking. It was a slow night. And we were talking about it. And uh, Sam told me that... Uh, Ten of the guys had donated their organs, and uh, they couldn't retrieve their organs there. They sent them up to Charleston in order to retrieve their organs, and then brought the remains back to the uh, um, funeral directors. Well, anyways, I thought that was. Uh, pretty wild night in Buford. We had more cars in the back than we had in the front. But uh, I just thought I'd throw this out. You know, had a little bit of fun opening up that cafeteria. <laughs> anyway, have a good Saturday and a good weekend. And I'm looking at about 13 minutes so anyways <coughs> not much is going on here it's quiet I gave it to paradise last night I'll probably go and get it in the morning I got $25 <laughs> I'll probably give that give that away too so Anyway, I'm looking at about another five more seconds before this thing shuts off. So, like I said, have a beautiful weekend and God bless.